something that a pro-democracy supermajority ought to care a lot about, something around which we should have a consensus commitment, is the security of our elections, making sure that when we cast a ballot, that ballot gets cast and counted, making sure that the discussion that leads up to the casting of that ballot is, in fact, not manipulated unduly. Helping us think that through is Ambassador Karen Kornblue. She is an expert on election security. And Karen, I got notes in. I got at least one note in that says, this Karen person is so depressing. Maybe I just shouldn't vote. There's no hope. There, oh, everything's no. just rigged. I got no, we're all doomed. Ambassador, what do we do about it? That, you know, that's exactly the way that the opponents of democracy want you to feel. And that's what, you know, Putin does, and that's what the Chinese do, what the Chinese government does, is they flood the information space. They're not trying to convince you, trying to convince the average citizen that their version of truth is right, because they couldn't possibly. They're just trying to confuse you and make you think there's no point, that no one agrees with you. And that it's hopeless. As you said, there's a super majority of people who support democracy, um, who support having the truth out there. And so I think it's really important to be aware of the media soup that we're swimming in and to help clean it up. How do we clean it up? Um, yeah. So from a policy point of view, you know, we let a whole bunch of laws uh, get outdated. They work on the offline world to some extent, but they haven't been updated for the online world. What do I mean? Just consumer protection, you know, you're constantly being tricked online. Um, civil rights, a whole bunch of civil rights laws don't apply online. Some of this voter suppression you were talking about, I would put under there. Public accommodation laws, like people are harassed and driven off line because so much of the disinformation focuses on vulnerable communities. And campaign finance, I mean, as you all know, I'm sure all your listeners know, uh, Citizens United was a terrible decision, but... Um, but it's made even worse by the lack of transparency online. So yeah. that's subverted even the deal that was supposed to be part of that. Um, the fact that um, the news media, local news media, has been totally undermined, and the fact that the platforms aren't accountable. So there's a bunch of stuff we can do. We can update those laws. We should tax online advertising to pay for a new PBS of the Internet that supports public interest local journalism. Yeah. And we need to have more accountability. Citizens, what they need to do is just like offline you need to organize, online you need to organize both. It's all one and the same. Um, so on the far right, what they've done is they've or they 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 uh, conspire with each other. They uh, pick memes, they push them out, they build up their influencers. Um, we need to understand what they're doing, and um, and people who support democracy need to understand how to do that kind of Saul Linsky type offline organizing work online, um, but it has to be both. You know, it has to be person-to-person -person offline as well as online. It has and you, to want human you want human communication, because then you know that person's a real person. Exactly, exactly. And so we need to have some kind of um, verification, so you know it's a real person. It's not that kind of bot that you thought. So, you know, in the last election, y you had a troll or a bot that was trying to influence you. Well, there was a site, Blacktivist, um, on Facebook that had more followers than the Black Lives Matter website, and it gave people yeah. wrong information. So we need to make sure that the groups that we join are, um, are you know, uh, the, that the managers are real. Yeah, and sometimes that I can tell. Sometimes I can tell if it's like yet. if it's like an egg. I think maybe I can tell if they've got if they follow a thousand people, but they have four followers. Sometimes I can tell. Like if they're brand new, you know, sort of bots, I can tell. But sometimes the bots are sophisticated. Sometimes they have good profiles. Sometimes they're people who I know and respect who follow them, retweet their stuff, and it can be hard. Are there best sources? And is anybody doing a really good job at identifying uh, who are who are more likely bots, anybody we should be following to watch this stuff? You know, there are a bunch of experts um, uh, that are in different areas. So like the anti-vax disinformation that's out there, somebody that's really good to follow is Renee Resta. She's been doing a lot of good work on that. Obviously the CDC, but I mean in terms of the online misinformation. Um, uh, and there are a bunch of different... The Hamilton 68, which comes out of the German Marshall Fund, the Alliance for Securing Democracy, 
um, looks at how what the Russians are up to and what their major sites are are promoting. Yep. So there are a bunch of, of different sites, but we almost need like community watch. Yeah. You know, we need to really be responsible before we share something. And what's unfortunate about the online environment is they make it so easy to be tricked by disinformation and for you to share it. Yeah, so easy to sp- I, it's so easy for me it. to sp- to spread the virus, right? As long if I they could just yeah. they trigger me right, if they can get me. Oh yeah, that's one of my hot buttons. They got my hot button. Heck yes, click like, click share, and then all of a sudden I've used my whatever credibility I might have to convince somebody else. It's exactly what they do. That's exactly what they do. Is they they spend your credibility, and so we all need to realize that we're all influencers. And we need to be, we need to fight against the urge, just like you might fight against eating that cupcake in the office. You need to fight against the urge to share it until you've checked it out because you're an influencer and you really have to be, be super careful. And then we need to build up trusted networks and that's really like community organizing. And we've, we've, you know, and then we need to put pressure on the platforms to be much more transparent, much more responsible, create some friction so it's not so easy to, um, share the bad stuff, some more user interface so we know what we're seeing. You know, it's really like one of the buyer beware kind of environment. And so we all need to become much more individually. Yeah, um, and, and to help others do it. That's one of, the re- one of the things I try to do now. I'm trying to get in the habit of is if I end up on some thread or I see it, I just try to say, hey, do we have a second source for that? Say, hey, is that is that short? In fact, many of my, I've talked about this before, but many of my, my now deceased uncle, uh, who was a hero of mine, uh, would send me stuff. Much of our political dis- discourse back and forth on email was me doing research he probably should have done to help him understand that something he was spreading or asking, at least I gave, I appreciated he would ask me about it, uh, that that was in fact a trumped up deal. And I hugely appreciate it, Karen. Anything I should have asked you that I didn't? No, I just, I just think that this last point is really important, that we think that media education has to happen to the young. I think the young are a little bit more savvy. It's the older people uh, who are, I think, more credulous. And so we have to help our parents, our aunts and uncles uh, really understand this and, uh, and think before sharing.